Welcome back everybody, catchphrase. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Boost Day 2000. Hit subscribe. <laughs> We interrupt our program. Okay, if you're new to the channel, big thumbs up, thank you, hit like and subscribe. If you're just scrolling past and you think, I recognise that guy, yes you probably do. Can you remember me from my Fiesta RS Turbo, RS Turbo restoration, body shop work, all that kind of stuff and as well as my Focus and my Ford Escort RS2000, Coswish RS2000 Turbo, big boost power, dead, car, killed, that kind of blog. <laughs> Today is going to be something different, okay? So, um, back last year, I bought myself an Amazon, um, I think it was Amazon or eBay, um, oil pressure gauge. And in my old engine, it seemed to sort of show really low oil pressure and beep, do its job kind of thing. My new engine is showing 60 PSI. I don't doubt it, but I don't think it is very accurate. Okay, so it's no new news, but the engine has failed. Something's wrong with it. It's got a tap, so she falls hydraulic lift does, tap it, or we think it's maybe, it's got a knock, somewhere it's developed an issue. We've changed the big end bearings, all that kind of stuff. Look, this video isn't about this. The engine in that is coming out. It's coming out next week. <laughs> There'll be a full blog, full pulling it out, full tears and that kind of stuff. What this log is about though is this. I went out and I didn't cheap out this time. I bought myself a stack gauge, okay? Use a discount code on eBay because there was a discount code just after Christmas. And we're gonna fit this. The current setup runs off the oil pressure switch where it would have been. It's got an MPT adapter, very similar to this, okay? So it runs a one-eighth and a one-quarter MPT. It's got the adapter in there. One goes to the oil line of a turbo, so you do want a turbo conversion, that kind of stuff. Um, what I've got currently in the back of a box and electronic sender runs up here, runs to the gauge. The big problem is though, when you turn the car over and crank it, with it being electronic, I will show you now, it doesn't show the oil pressure on crank. It just goes blank and goes down, which isn't very good. Let me show you. Check out the last video of that. Quite cool, quite quirky, got a lot of interest. And now I gotta squeeze down this gap to get in the car. Lucky I'm slim, yeah, and I've been laying off for uh, food since Christmas, hey? This is tighter than I thought. Okay, we're in some shape or form. Right, so that's the gauge, okay? It's an EL Uto, EL Uto, whatever that is. Um, it's not a bad little gauge, it looks quite cool. But already I'm showing 40 PSI. So calibration does not give me any confidence. Okay, this is a bit tough. So what I want you to see is hopefully you can see the gauge. I haven't got the best angle. So look, that's ignition on. It's doing a bit of calibration, all that kind of stuff. It's showing zero. Let me show you right now. Okay, so it shows zero, right? Let's go to crank, yeah? So the car is not running right, we're aware of that. But we're gonna check this oil pressure. So let's have a look again. And show you on crank. Reset the calibration. You can see. There's something definitely wrong about that. That's all right. Because that's showing more than what I had before. Let's try and reset that. Okay, right, so when I'm actually cranking a row, Jesus, that's saggy now, isn't it? When I'm actually cranking it, you'll see that it's not showing the actual oil pressure, which it should do if it's a manual one. I'll show you again now. Okay, so ignition on, gauge resetting, reset it. So when I turn the key and give it a bit of a start, okay, remember, something definitely up with this gauge it blanks out. See, so it's not showing oil pressure.
okay, look, to me, that ain't a great gauge, is it? So I'm gonna get into the car, disconnect it, show you how to do the new line, um, and let's get the new one on, and let's do that kind of comparison, shall we? I'm not going to plumb it into the car, I'm gonna run it neat round like the A-pillar or something just for now, just so we can see the difference, because it's gonna have to come back out with the engine. Okay, so actually in the engine bay, what do you get in the stack gauge? I've opened this already, right? So, and do you know what? Did anybody else like have buzz cuts and stuff? I had a haircut a week ago. It might just be me. Look how long it's going already. It's the most upkeep haircut for a non-keep haircut. But I don't do anything with it. I don't use product anymore. It's just, it grows so fast. Anyhow, ignore me rambling on. Let's have a look what you get. Okie dokie. So you get these really quirky cool stickers. If you know me, Deathbox Dan, love a sticker. Take a look at my Instagram. Been well into like all skateboards and skateboards and all classic stickers and stuff years and years and years ago. You get this, you get a nice rubber grommet and a small rubber grommet for bulkhead. So that is something I will be using. You get the gauge with little fasteners on the back to put it on. It's a nice little um, holder behind. And you get these NPT adapters. So I've put these on loose at the moment. So how they actually work, okay? So my understanding is that's a, we do one eighth and one quarter, whatever, right? So that's the same, sti same size as a standard. Hold on a minute, let me double check. Yeah, so that thread is the same size as a standard. Okay, so that's a one quarter. So if you wanted to, could screw this into the block and then put the one quarter MPT in or the one eighth MPT in. Um, yeah, so it doesn't fit in that. So that's the standard size one for a block. So I don't need that one at the moment, so that can go safe, but there. What I have is the smaller one, okay? So I screw this into what I just showed you, which is already on my car. And then you have this back here, which fastens down. You can't fasten this too tight because it's got like a little brass nipple in it. I'll put a picture up, okay? Um, it's like a compression fit in. It's very much like what you'd have on your um, brake system and brake lines. Okay, right. My next job is to get under the car quickly and buzz this on. Probably won't show you. Maybe I will. We'll see. Okay, I will actually show you. Don't forget my little Oxito battery booster lamp and um, starter pack. So look, this is the nipple. This is the tiny little brass connector. So that goes over this, it's like it's sleeved. Yeah, and then when this is on here and then this is on the other end, it just works like a compression fit in. So first of all, I need to get this into the car. Right, let me tell you. To get that sender out, okay, so that's an electronic sender that runs two wires to the gauge in the car, one being a ground and one being a if, both grounds in there. Um, what a pig of a job. You need two left hands, and that's a 22 mil spanner. Well, as you can see, I've battered holy hell out of my arm trying to get up between the exhaust and stuff. Um, so look, we get the nipple on and the new one on. I won't show you how to do that. I've explained and we'll run the wire neat through the A-pillar and take a look, see how this, uh, how this gauge compares, check the comparison and stuff. Also, whilst I'm doing this, my phone keeps pinging, my um, light has gone fl flat, so I'm using the torch. So Palmer Sanders, if you're watching this in the group chat, okay, stop keeping on and just so I'm using my phone to do a job and we keep going ding, 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 ding. Like my engine is sat in the sound, I like Palmer's car pinks on full boost. So stop it, guys, okay? That's a bit of a private joke between all of us. Um, but yeah, give me a break, guys, and uh, I'm trying to try and do some work here. Okay, so hopefully I can see it up here. Yeah, I can. That was a bit of a ball ache to do. Okay, so see all this? It worried me a bit because it's not. Um, it's not protected, but apparently this is rated to like 10 bar. So what my plan will be, okay, to put some sheathing on it, maybe something like this, or this, where it goes through um, the bulkhead. Hang on, check this out. Has anybody tasted 
this, okay? I highly recommend it. This is absolutely amazing. I love cherry things, and Dr. Pepper has just got like a quiet taste. So, um, yeah, I'm well into these right now. I recommend you go and try one. Okay, so that is the gauge wired in. Oh, I'm squeezing right through again through this lovely little gap. Not ideal. So, there is loads of room in my garage, but not where I've parked. Okay, so old gauge disconnected, probably will beep. New gauge dangling down there. Okay, so the idea of this now is to look if it is cranking um, when obviously I turn the ignition uh, before it starts and let's see what the oil pressure reads on here. Let's have a look in real time. I've not even tested this, so let's hope we don't pee oil out everywhere. That's not even working. Right, unless something's seriously wrong, that's a worry. Let's, uh, let's hope it's not kinked. Oh no, you can see the difference in colour. It is built oil pressure up now, um, with it being a new line. I would have thought that would happen a bit faster though. Look, from experience, put that in the comments. Is that a normal thing? Is that natural? Because I don't think that's right. Okay, let's try again. I can see the oil come in. Yeah, oil is coming. I can see it now. It's just about there. Yep, see yeah. it. Here we are, 50 PSI oil pressure. Engine is actually sounding better too for some reason. Give it a rev, obviously it should be going up. Yeah. Goes back down then. So hopefully on the next startup, it should show pressure straight away. So yeah, it's about 52 PSI, is it, would you say? Goes up gently on a rev, it's doing its job. So yeah, we have got good oil pressure then. Okay, so moment of truth, let's have a look underside to see if it's leaked any oil. So far, I can't see any. Okay, so let's have a look through it. There's a tiny little drop on the actual switch, so it's hard to see, let's focus. There you are, yeah, tiny little bit by there, so that will need retightening and probably some NPT tape. But yeah, nice and easy, so we know that's a good one. Okay, so in summary, a stack gauge would have been calibrated, it would be a proper gauge, showing like 52 volt PSI, um, and the other one's like 75, 80, whatever. Um, good, very got good oil pressure. The other gauge was probably a bit out and it wasn't calibrated or configured very well. So would I spend the extra money and have an original stack one or a, a yin yang special? Going forward, definitely have an original one, a proper one. For peace of mind too, because someone said about making sure that the compression was released. So cylinder one, cylinder two, Cylinder number three. Cylinder number four. So one thing I would like to check is that it's building up oil pressure when I'm cranking it. It is taking its time, but you can see it moving down the line. So it's definitely lubing the block too, but I don't know, should it be showing full oil pressure when it's not running? Again, leave that in the comments. 
anyhow look this engine is coming out pull the head off it um, if you need to pull the pistons out look for valve guides all that kind of stuff and fingers crossed you'll see us boost in sometime soon but anyhow it's content for you um, some other things we've had to absolutely landed nice clean bottle hardly used because i broke the last one fiver i've also managed to get a set of leads r2000 yeah landed fiver and i've got something else on order which has come in which i'll let you know about then but anyhow until then look hit like hit sub enable notifications follow the journey and thanks for watching yes i'm looking for a new wash up bottle as uh, somehow when fit my cooler, I've hit this against this and killed it. So if you know for one, of the right price, not too expensive, no RS tax, I'll take it. Or just gift it me. Only joking, of course I'll pay. Um, but yeah, let me know, all seriousness, I do need one.